morning, everybody. How you doing? I'll give everybody a couple minutes to get uh, in this crazy, crazy room. Welcome to Ted Davies Artistry. I am Ted Davies, and I am welcoming anybody that's new to this channel, onto uh, this crazy creative journey that we're on. Uh, I'm an artist and an author and a YouTuber now, which is kind of scary that they actually gave me a microphone and uh, a camera, and they record it. It's a little bit uh, dangerous, but... We're going to have a lot of fun on this thing. So please subscribe, smash the like button, get notifications, and be part of this Ted's Tribe because uh, it's a lot of fun, and I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly entertained. If you are a creative, uh, please consider uh, looking into uh, furthering your business, too, by all the things that we're doing. I'm part of the Rising Tide Broadcast Network, and we are affiliates. Uh, basically, we're creatives that help creatives, and that's the whole idea behind it. Rising Tide raises all ships, and that's what we do. Check us out on Facebook under Rising Tide Broadcast Network, and join the journey. In any case, uh, today we have the amazing Lisa Malone, the promo queen. Uh, a lot of us are having uh, thoughts of grandeur uh, about crowdfunding, and I think that uh, right now is the prime time to think about crowdfunding. There's a lot of things that are happening right now that we're stuck at home. And we saw what happened last year with crowdfunding and the uh, the explosion of uh, investments that were made in creative uh, uh, projects and the uh, just this the excitement behind it. And with Lisa, uh, she she runs, she manages literally uh, Malone Management. She handles uh, crowdfunding campaigns. And, you know, gives it the tweak that it really needs um, to be the most profitable that it can be. And that's something I want you as creatives to look at because there might be something you might not be aware of with crowdfunding. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about Lisa as a human being so that you guys know who you're investing in when uh, when you're ready to do this thing. So in any case, uh, let's talk about my sponsor, uh, Indian River Roasting Company. Uh, today we have espresso in my cup, and it is awesome, as I talk about it all the time. So I am definitely caffeinate Ted, big time. Uh, why don't we show the uh, promo code real quick, or the uh, commercial real quick, and use that promo code and save 10% off of what you're buying. Be back in a second. Here at Ted Davies Artistry, we take coffee seriously. And so does our sponsor, Indian River Roasting Company. It's fair trade, organic and they're artisans just like me. The only difference is I use watercolor and ink and they use coffee beans. And I enjoy it all through my day. So do yourself a favor, go to the description when you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Find Indian River Roasting Company's website, use the promo code CAFFEINATED2021 and save 10% on your purchase. And like I said, use Caffeinate Ted 2021, uh, and it will save you 10%. Get some caffeine, and let's rock this thing. Okay, today on Rising Tide Broadcasting Network, or Broadcast Network, I start the, the day out, which is a scary thought, too. They let me, uh, you know, you start your day with Ted. Christine might argue with that. She uh, she doesn't approve of that for anybody, really. She's been doing it for 20, 22 years, that poor woman. Um, but you guys can start. Tuesdays with Ted Talk at 10 a.m. Uh, during the day, uh, we'll give you a little bit of a break. And then at 6 p.m. tonight, we have uh, Legend of the Traveling Tardis with Christian Basil. Anything that deals with Doctor Who, you need to be involved in this station or on that station. So check that out tonight uh, on the Legend of Traveling Tardis uh, on their YouTube channel as well. I know they're growing uh, subscriptions right now. You might as well be the beginning to get them up off the ground. And at 8 p.m. tonight, we have Clever Title Pending. And Brian K. Morris is having Mr. Fleming from the UK, who is an author and an artist, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, check out what they're doing, because I think uh, I think he's got a lot to offer um, for creatives and, and their journey and see what uh, how they do it over the pond. So and then on Thursday, uh, Ted and Carl's Cigar Show returns uh, for their monthly cigar show. We are doing a really cool cigar show about cigars in movies. Um, everything that we, you know, the pop culture with the cigar world is, uh, is very in line with the, the movies that we watch. 
And there's a few, there's, I think there's a top five or top 10 that Carl and I are both going to, we're both going to have our sides of which, which uh, movies we like with, they have cigars in them and possibly even which cigars they are, which is kind of cool. So I'll check in on that. If you like a little bit of Hollywood, uh, the old style Hollywood land stuff from the 1930s, all the way up till today, you can, uh, you can check that out on Thursday morning at 11 AM, uh, here at Ted Davies artistry. So uh, okay, let me get a breath here. Lisa Malone is a, I consider a creative. Uh, she is a, a kind of a Renaissance woman. She's a photographer. She's a graphics. Uh, she's got a graphics background, management background. Um, but what really I like about her is just who she is. She's got a really good style. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't flaunt it. She just, she is it. You know, that's it. So let me bring her in. I want you guys to get your notebooks uh, ready, and I want you to start taking some notes because there's going to be a lot of good information on crowdfunding. And uh, yeah, so let's start out with her and let's see what she's all about. Give me one second. So how are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you for having me. No, oh, it's my pleasure. So we, I decided that um, I gave Lisa a nickname last week, and we're going to be using it. So everybody that's in Ted's tribe, anybody that's on the Rising Tide broadcast network. She is the promo queen. And what I mean by that is you guys really need to check out what she's doing with campaigns and everything else. Um, she is uh, from uh, Karen Nicole's uh, fire bitch fame and the huge success that they've had on that uh, Kickstarter to name a few. Uh, but in any case, we'll get to that in a few minutes, but Lisa, when did you land on this planet? Well, I was dropped off in the eighties. So <laughs> A uh, very interesting time for me to grow up. Um, I had a perm when I was a kid and everything. <laughs> so uh, definitely an 80s kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where did you end up? Uh, where were you born? What's In Illinois. You? Yeah. Uh, cool. Right in Chicago suburbs. So we mm -hmm. were in the northern part of the, the state. Um, cool. uh, we moved to, to Montana where my sister was born, um, lived there for a little bit, but then we ended back up in Illinois and I've yeah. been here ever since. That's cool. Man, Montana's beautiful. We were looking at, um, I should say I was looking at property out there years ago before we moved up here and it was, uh, it's pretty far. It's a really long it's way. Gorgeous, you don't realize so it is. I mean, it's beautiful. The Yellowstone river out there. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure. Everything. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I love Chicago. Don't get me wrong. I love, you know, I was, I'm a big fan of Chicago, but uh, yeah, Montana's, it was beautiful. So, um, or is beautiful. So are you big family, small family? What, why are you have siblings? Do you have besides your so, sister? I have a sister, um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, mm -hmm. My little family unit here, I married. Um, I don't have children, but I have fur babies. I have three dogs and a cat. Awesome. Yeah, I have a husband. <laughs> he's he's like an afterthought. But my, the, my the, uh, Yeah, the byproduct of the, uh, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> what um, What kind of dogs are they? Yeah. Um, we have a Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. Um, he we call him Boss Hog because he thinks he's bigger than all of yeah. the other dogs. Where's um, our is hers is too. So yeah, yeah. And uh, then a Beagle Chihuahua mix, and mm -hmm. we just got a puppy. Her name's Daisy, and she is six months old, and she is a Blue Healer mix. Hmm. So yeah, so she's been a ball full of energy for I'm us. sure. Absolutely. Yes, a handful. Yeah, I, know. But... I know. We've had uh Calypso for three, four weeks now, and she's a, she's twelve weeks now, and it's she's Chihuahua and she's this I didn't you know, we've got a bigger dog, Murphy, and you know, he's older now, his his bag he's got some calcification on his spine, so he doesn't get around as well, you know. And we're just making him comfortable in that. But with her, I'm like I didn't understand what the zoomies were until I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, she's like, she's like a greyhound. It's a miniature greyhound running all over the place. I'm like, what the hell is going on? 
Yeah, um, we it was funny when we got snow. She had never seen snow before yeah, because she's yeah. a puppy. Yeah. And she was like, Oh my gosh, this is the best thing it is. ever. Did she nip at the snow and all that. Oh, That's she what... was jumping in it, yeah. nose full down in yeah. it, digging for toys. Yeah. I'm like going That's the way that's dogs. exactly the way Calypso <laughs> was. It's hilarious. It's a little cold this week. It's been it really is very bitter. cold. It yeah. is very cold. They she actually stays out though. She's got quite a bit of coat. We're yeah. not sure what she's mixed with, but mm -hmm. um, she's a really great dog. Cool. Um, the other two are like f this. Yeah, <laughs> we're going right. inside. <laughs> we're gonna do I'm our business you. and go inside. Got it. And we're uh, this is all eighteen above, by the way. So you know, if you, uh, yes, if, if, yeah. If we blur it I'm out, we blur it, it out. Professional. That's all good. That's all good. The the group that uh, and and we do. You know, we'll keep it as clean. But sometimes the adjectives need to fly. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so okay, so here we are. Okay, we're you're in Illinois. You go man Montana. Come back. Uh, what was your age then when you got back to Illinois? You were uh, still a kid then? You weren't a teenager yet? Uh, no, I was still I was still young. I started mm -hmm. uh, elementary school in kindergarten in Illinois. Got so, it. Got yeah, it. so I, all of my, um, even my uh, post high school education, I went mm -hmm. to Eastern Illinois University. I studied journalism. Yep. I minored in public relations. I was very involved in various activities, uh, including marching band. I'm a big yep. nerd. That's all good. Did you get your <laughs> uh, letter? Did you get your letter in uh, marching band or no? Um. Yeah, I got I got a letter in high school. Yeah, that's for cool. marching band. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it's all we're we're adults now. I mean, back then, yeah, I get what you're saying. I I was like, you know, I, I hung out with all everybody from jocks to choir, whatever. It didn't matter to me. And like what I was, that's the way I was raised. Everybody has a as a as a place to at the table, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um. Uh. What did you play? What was uh? Clarinet. Oh, cool. And hey, um, awesome. I did. I actually did so much with that um i was in orchestra i did all of the musicals i in the uh pit orchestra yeah um i participated in like the solo and ensemble contests that they had it was it was a wonderful experience to have awesome. in, in high school well that's good i mean and that's the thing as long as it's a good experience and you can grow from it even better uh right. i know i wasn't uh I wasn't in band in that. I know Chris was uh, in, um, what was it, choir, uh, choir? I guess it was that she ended up getting her. I don't know. I never understood that, how they got the letter in that. But that's that's cool. She's got a beautiful voice. So, nice. um, but in any case, um, so what was your first job? Okay, you got through. Okay, here you are. I mean, you weren't a journalist right out of high school, were you? I mean, no. what did you do in high school? Did you no. work? Oh, well, uh, well, actually... I did. I did a lot of internships and paid mm. internships. And it's funny, you mentioned I wasn't a journalist right out of high school. I actually mm. was. Really? Believe right. it or not. Inform yeah, yes. yeah. Um, I wa worked for a small local newspaper called Lakeland Newspapers. Mm. I don't believe they're around anymore. But they cover different cities in Lake County. And I actually was put in charge of one of the biggest cities that um, was in the uh, county in the city of Mundelein. And I had to go to like the, the um, meetings that were the mayor was there, you know, and, and write up all this stuff. And I'd have to go do the police blotter every week. And so it was very interesting. Um, and I was a journalist when 9-11 happened. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I walked in. I literally left all of my classes because I was in community college at that sure. time. Sure. Abby, because I left all my classes and I'm like, F this. I cannot do this right now. I need yeah. to be there. And because I was an intern, they didn't really give me anything to do. They were so focused on all this other stuff. And I'm like, I'm here, you know, so I hung out for a little bit and then I left, you know, um, and I went yeah. to go see what was going on in uh, the town that I was covering. We, um, yeah, 2001, I was, uh, I was working with the Home Depot Corporation and we had, uh, I was in um, one of the offices and the, 
TV went on. And one of the things about uh, in the office that we were in, there was a lot of military, re not, not retired, but they were out of the military and they were working in uh, IT and all this other stuff. I was uh, more into the CAD, the computer aided design stuff. And it, it, I mean, everybody, they were like in special, all these guys were like talking. It must have been this guy. They started listing down all the people that they were trained to, to look at, you know, over the years in the military and, you know, with Bin Laden, whoever. So everybody's freaking out, you know, on top of watching the, the terrible scene on the TV, you know, cause we're in the yeah. break room, everybody's running into the break room and it was, um, you know, within like 30 minutes, there's F-16s flying. It, this is in Detroit and there's, you know, we had an air force base that was close and it was just, it was, um, chaotic and I'll never forget that, uh, that feeling, you know, um, yeah. what was it? Well, we have a so, naval base close yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you understand. Um, and that's yeah. one thing living by the coast here, we've got a constant, uh, air, uh, fighter jets and everything going by here, uh, especially during the inauguration and that, but they were all, I don't know if they were testing. You hear every once in a while, the, a slight boom over the lake, you know, they're subsonic or they supersonic, yeah. you know? Um, but there's, mm -hmm. you know, it, that feeling of, uh, you're almost in shock. You don't really, as a journalist, did you feel like even a young journalist at that, did you feel like you had to start taking notes or you were just absorbing it? Did you take, did you start writing things down? Did, what was the, uh, do you remember? I was very lost at because I needed some direction, you know, like I knew, yeah. I knew it was an important moment in history. And I actually still say, I saved the newspapers from the Chicago Tribune yeah. Yeah. for, for mm -hmm. a couple of certain, you know, significant dates because I knew that they would be important. But um, as a young journalist, they didn't provide me enough direction sure. and I, as to how I could really help them because this was such a traumatic and unprecedented event that never really seen it. Yeah, never ever been never involved. seen it. Yeah. I don't think they even knew what they were doing yeah. either. And they were just trying to grasp at whatever they could, you know, they were probably give calling around and seeing, you know, who's locking down what and, you know, what trying to get a hold of different police departments right. and the right. naval base because the naval base was in that county. Sure. Um, and that's, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that was something else too. I mean, just the, right. their, their uh, being there uh, was a whole nother level, I'm sure, of security and everything else that was going on. We yeah. had a lot of, um, we had a lot of hotels around where we were because we would have, we would house a lot of uh, corporate guys that would come in, um, you know, cause I had an office in Atlanta and Chicago. So I would go, I'd be flying all over the place and that was, everything was shut down. They locked down everything. So the hotels, you couldn't even get, you know, I said to my coworkers, I'm like, I'm going home. I told at the time, Christine, I think was working. Um, she was working as a, uh, I don't know if it was concierge or what it was the title, um, at one of like the embassy suites hotels. And we had just gotten married, so it was close to where I worked. Sure. And uh, I was, I said, um, and uh, you know, the it was bad because the um, emirate or the uh, what was it, Emirates people were there. Everybody was up from out of the country was at the hotel that weekend. Right. From every every okay. You know, so everybody was just the FBI were there. It was freaking nuts, out. You know. Yeah. So just yeah. to add all the tension oh and all this buildup, you know. So we're, I, I get it. So it doesn't matter if you're slightly older. I was in my 30, I was like 30, I think. You still don't, even maturity, whatever, you still don't know really how to handle it. You know, I was like, I'm just going home. Forget it. No. I'm going to go see Christine. I'm leaving you. See ya. Got out of work and I, right. I drove straight home, you know, and it was, and it was weird too. It, there wasn't like radio silence. Like, I don't know if you, um, were you guys affected when the power went out? I don't know, back in like 2004 on the East coast, there was a huge power outage, I think in 2005 or 2004. No. Well, we got hit here we and there's not. like dead, there's no radio, nothing. And that was yeah. really creepy. That was, you know, those type of, and I don't know if, if I was a like journalist, movie stuff. Yeah. Right. And it's <laughs> completely and the whole like East coast was out. It wasn't just, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, but as a, that is crazy. I mean, those, those effects, those, 
I think guide us towards certain ways in our Absolutely. life, how we react later. Right. Um, Absolutely. and how did, how do you think as far as, uh, for you, uh, did, how long were you a journalist? Did that help you along those, um, lines, along those lines or no? I know that you, were you, I know you were frustrated because they didn't offer you a whole lot to, to help you to get, you know. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't, it wasn't a big deal to me that I didn't okay. really get to do much for that. You know, in mm -hmm. the aftermath of everything, there were, was things for me to cover, but it was just in the moment they didn't know what to do. I got it. Um, it, it gave me a lot of experience um, in writing and really getting to interview people and getting down to the heart of like what really makes a person do what they want to do. And okay. I really like features, you know, where I got to interview people and yeah. uh, like other artists. I can totally um, understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's so, inquisitive. You're 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 constantly trying to find knowledge. You're trying to find out about people, you know, to yeah. see how not what they how they tick, but how their experiences at life, right? That's, right. That's what drives I, I want, them? Yeah. What drives them to yeah, do what they story. do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I really found the human nature aspect interesting um in in a lot of different ways um some of the stuff that i had to do obviously was just like the normal you know police yeah. bladder stuff and whatever Dro so. yeah, droning through I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah but it gave me enough experience to want to continue to go into college and do journalism mm -hmm. but by then the state of journalism was changing because of computers and it was becoming more online journalism and then you were yeah. hearing about you know, people having a hard time getting a job. So I was like, crap, <laughs> you know, right, right. I love to write. Okay. Public relations is a, is a thing I can add in there. And then I ended up working, um, an eight month internship at six flags in their PR department. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, at the very end of my, um, college career and that was the year that they launched their brand new hurricane harbor which wow. was a complete water wow. park so i was like i had you're right in it <laughs> the most interviews out of any intern ever i had put to, mm -hmm. i had put together this amazing um like uh what do you call it like a fact book thing with all this graphics and everything and they were like this is great you know for selling and and mm -hmm. I, it was a wonderful experience um and then i ended up in marketing okay well i mean that's, <laughs> for my first well, job. it, it kind of goes into the it goes into the they go hand in hand because everything's marketing even if you know uh it's uh yeah i i i, I put and this is going to sound really weird but I can I can compare marketing with speed dating because you're constantly it's like you've got 30 seconds or whatever to meet somebody, tell them who you are. If you're going to go out on a date with them, whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, boom, 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 boom. The same thing with marketing. Right. You're going right. to you're gonna buy my stuff. No. OK, you're going to buy my stuff. No. Or, or are you going to you know, this is not just you at all. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I don't think it's I mean, journalism, the marketing, I think that's a that's a great segue. I don't think it's. um. I, don't, I think PR. that's just natural progression yeah. and PR, right? It's all, it's all marketing. Yeah. I, I've said, I say it all the time. You'll hear me say that constantly. What's, um, okay. So you went from journalism to marketing. Was there any yep. in-betweens there? There was any in-betweens or that was it? You went no. right to. That right. was and it. Then, My first job out of college was marketing and wow. I worked for the largest mall in yeah. Chicagoland area, Woodfield mm -hmm. Mall. Yep. Um, I've and been there a I was times. in the management. I've been, I've been there a couple times. Okay. I remember that mall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I worked there. Um, and my boss's name was Lisa, which was hilarious because we were the Lisas. Mm -hmm. And she really shaped me into who I am today. She's so, she's to, continues yeah, to be an inspiration. Um I okay, so I'm gonna take it back for a minute. I am a person who was bullied when I was a child uh, all through my entire schooling, including yep. college. 
I don't know why, but I just seem to be a person that was easy to take advantage of because I always like to see the good in people. True, I never like to see the bad. So long story short, I had a lot of social issues. You know, mm-hmm. I would take things personally, um, but I was able to work with the my boss, Lisa, and she was really encouraging me and we were having these one-on-one meetings and she was explaining to me it's not you it's it's the work and we need to you know it's about staying on message it's about this it's about that you know it's not about you and that was just one of those things that really changed my perspective of how I did my work and how I looked at things and how I, I started to take things in and put them back out to others. Um, Did you feel like um, you weren't a victim w- w- when you're working? Does that? I felt somebody you? cared. Yeah. Cared I felt somebody to, cared yeah. enough yeah. to help me succeed. And I eventually got promoted yeah. when I was there. Um and I won a best in sales award. Mm-hmm. Um, I I got them almost a quarter million dollars over three years. You know, I give Just me a chance. She took the, yeah, she gave you that that uh, m- not momentum. We, we talk about permission a lot. I Brian and I talk about that. How sometimes people need permission to succeed, right? You, I mean, I get it because I was bullied too as a kid. I was, uh, uh, it was just, it was a different thing and still I, until later in high school and that, and then things started to change, but it, it was, you know, you're, you're empathetic, you're compassionate. I always was, I always was brought up to look at the best in people mm-hmm. and, and to that, you know, that's a superpower. A lot of, you know, we talk about comic books and superheroes and everything. That's a real superpower. If you have empathy and compassion, um, especially in today's world, I, I really, and I, I tell anybody that I, I've talked to about you know being bullied uh, as a child or even kids that I know that are getting picked on. Um, you know, what kind of pain are the other people in? I'm not justifying bullying. I'm not saying that, but you, you've got to, um, you found an outlet to be creative and to benefit the world, you know, and that business, it sounds like, and that company um, through it. Uh, I was almost, uh, when I was a, when I was a freshman, I almost got killed by a bully. So, oh, and it was something where I'll never forget the, the laxed teachers and my parents and just how it didn't, it was, it was, it was important, but it wasn't like, yeah, okay. You're overreacting. Okay. But it was very, now, and, and now it, forget it. it. Now, yeah, now forget the it. guy would be in prison. There's no way, you know, Absolutely. And, that, and that's, and it rightfully should have been, but yeah. you know, you move past you, you, and it's hard because you've got that victim mentality. I did. For a long time, I was creative. I did all these things. And that's very candid. I don't tell many people about that. And then he and I actually became friends later. Um, As I got bigger than him in high school, this kid that gave me such a hassle in freshman year, we ended up becoming friends. Um, And that's so, I don't know. Wow. It's a a weird thing. It's a really weird thing because you don't, you know, how do you put it past? How do you move past that? So you took... You, from from what I'm looking at it, you took that uh, that angst and that anxiety, that energy, and converted it because she had taken time to sh- not shelter you, but build you up a little bit at work. You can take that all those years of well, anxiety and everything else and turn it into something that's good, you know, and productive. That's great. Absolutely, I mean, that- absolutely, and and she actually was able to kind of inspire me to be a better manager in my my position um that I took after that yeah. Yeah. um I I ended up going and working for my parents for a little while and doing um some uh, marketing and operations management for their powder coating company and that's um, never easy working and, with family it's never easy <laughs> maybe <yeah>. it is <laughs> you might have a good you might have a good family oh so, my dad is very much it needs to be a certain yeah. way and if yeah. it's not a certain way you know but i was brought in there to bring change yeah. and so that was part of my whole um 
um, when I was brought in there. Mm -hmm. And it was trial by fire for a little bit because he and I would butt heads and the other manager and I would butt heads and they were like, listen, you need to figure this out. And I'm like, okay, I need to channel my boss, my, my old boss. Ah. And she taught me that not everybody, you know, ha ha can be treated the same way. You need to learn yeah. how to work with different types of people. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one day it just clicked. And and ever since then, it's it's been like I've had this way of being able to interact with others um, and build them up without necessarily um calling them to have a tizzy fit yeah if that makes sense no nope. you know like i'm not mean. i'm not yeah. cutting them down i'm not making them upset sure. we um i did, oh. did a thing on youtube about um being uh, assertive and not insulting and that's it took me mm -hmm. years to, to get to that point um because i was the way i deliver things isn't exactly my tone isn't exactly the way I meant it, you know, I could be, I could be considered a real dick, you know, it's to some people, right? No, no comments, please. Sure. Um, but there's, there's, you know, there, <laughs> but I, I present it, but then I learned, you know, you know what, maybe if I come away from this way, you know, from talk to them, this, in, in this environment, from their standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's see their, their side of it a little bit. Maybe we can not influence them, but you know, you, you, you've got a real, um, opportunity with people uh if you can do that because you, you, everybody wins there's so many situations in life right. where nobody wins and if you can do that as a manager or as a creative and and everybody wins i mean you're gold you know and that's uh, that's rare that's a very but rare i'd like thing. to say that i'm i i try to be everybody's biggest cheerleader yeah yeah. If that makes sense. Well, you know, that, if, I mean, if that's makes perfect sense with what you're doing now, it makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause you're, you've, yeah. you've taken these experiences over the course of uh, the years and you've, you've built something to, to now. Um, I mean, due to uh, everything that's been happening with the pandemic and everything else, you're in a situation now that you're making the best of it. You're pivoting. And we've talked about that a lot yeah. here in this channel. Um, and uh, pivoting is a, a extremely important thing. And you're trying to, you're, you, the way that you've constructed it, you have to have the person that you're helping successful in order for you to be successful. That's Absolutely. The way to, I mean, right. I take, I take risks along with them, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm there every step of the way. I, my inbox is always open. I'm yeah. always available. You know, um, I, I have regular meetings with my clients and I try to keep them on track, you know, um, you know, Hey, have you ordered this yet? Hey, have you done this yet? Hey, have you done this yet? Yeah. Even though it might not be any of my business, mm -hmm. you know, it's still like, dude, you know, it's about time you need to do this, you know, because this is your, your first list. Kickstarter yeah. and you don't know. Yeah, in exactly. In architecture, <laughs> in architecture, we had, uh, you know, when building a home or any structure, we have a punch list. We go through punch list every day, get okay, drywall up, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, it, it's, it, it's the same way in business. You've got to have a punch list. You've got to have it. And, you know, some of the guys say it's a punch list because you get punched if you don't do it. Well, I disagree. I, I look at it like a checklist. You know, I try not to be violent on the job sites in the same way in business. You know, I try to make sure that. So when you're um, when when you're keeping people accountable, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. I I think accountability is very important. And I know that I need that uh, on a lot of cases, too. Um, I've had people call me, Hey, when's this book coming out? You know, when's this, you know, because I do, I get, I get to the point where I schedule it and it, it falls behind. How did, how did you start out? Who was your first client? Let me ask you that on this crowdfunding deal. Um, well, Kara actually hired me to do a uh, layout and editing for her confessions of a cosplay diva, okay. which um, launched Malone management okay. at that time. 
Mm -hmm. um so i did a lot of work for her on that and then of course uh fire bitch and fire bitch mm -hmm. two promotions um and i've worked with uh jt malloy on the sapphire specter you know that that really got me into this whole um scene okay and then kara yeah. was like you could do this yeah. for a living well you already have been it's just a different medium. yeah you already have exactly been. exactly so and i think you might have an advantage because you're not you you you're coming in with fresh eyes i'd always have as an as an artist or an architect i'd always have somebody else come in and look at what i've drawn to see it from a new set of uh, optics right sure. and i think that you're you have a real advantage because you can come in because you weren't always in in crowd funding you weren't always in certain Comics you've got your writing stuff. background, yes. you've got, you know, you could look at a uh, journalist perspective too for writing and everything else. You could actually write copy for a, for a campaign that most of us couldn't do. Right. I mean, seriously. I mean, that's, that's a definite, I'm trying, I'm, I know I'm selling you up, but it's the, that's the truth of the matter. You have an Absolutely. opportunity. So, you know, guys listen up because on the, on the campaign front now you, you've had successful campaigns though. You, you're Absolutely. How many? How many? Okay, so, um, well, I have not done quite as many, but uh, I've worked with Kara's campaigns. Yeah. So Confessions and uh, Fire Bitch 2. Sapphire Spectre was successful. Um, I did help out Rob Miltari mm -hmm. on his Nightwolf Volume 1, um, and I'm still working with him uh, promoting that. It's now currently on Indiegogo On Demand. Got it. Um and uh, I have another client that's looking to launch in March, and I am doing the Sapphire Spectre issue number two. Mm -hmm. so, so I have maybe maybe I can re rearrange it a bit. Yeah, sorry. Qual quality versus quantity. Uh, that's more important to me. Um, I would rather you you be three for three than mm -hmm. three out of twenty. You know what I mean? I'd rather yeah. if you did a hundred uh, Kickstarters. And you're only, you know, 30% success rate. You're, you're three for three right now. Yes. Right. That's what I'm getting at. So yeah. when people are, when you're looking at it, don't, you know, these are, these are big. I know Kara, she ended up, uh, the fire bitch. It was like $60,000. And yeah. what was her original? What was her original price? Oh, 5,000 or, she... or no, 20. I don't even know. No, it was probably like five, but, um, she beat her last campaign for fire bitch one. Okay. So, I mean, guys, I mean, listen up, don't forget about the quantity of how many you want to look at the numbers of how successful out of the gate. Boom, boom, right. boom. I mean, it's, um, did now can I ask you a couple of candid things about Kira? Absolutely. So was it, um, was she open to ideas? Uh, she's oh, pretty yeah. savvy. I know she's pretty savvy as a business owner. I've known her, you know, like I said, about 10 years, and just everything she does marketing wise, her and her husband do. Yes. She was open to, you know, you have to be open to it, right? You've got to be, you have to have client that is open well, she, to some suggestions. She would right? bounce ideas off me all the time. And I'd be like, yeah, or no, or she's, you know, she'd be like, okay, I'm not sure how to do this. And we would brainstorm together. Um, I'm her manager. So I talked to her a lot um, about, you know, what she's got going on. Um, but like, even with confessions, like I did some editing and, uh, some writing for the book and that was something that she really enjoyed. Um, the fact that I was able to contribute and, and right, right. write for her, you know, and it's because it was That's um, a huge advantage. almost like That's a ghost a, writer. Right. That's such a know? huge advantage. People don't realize that because a lot of people right. can't write if you're visual, some people are visual. Some people are, they can write that there's all different aspects of it. You've got yeah. a, you've got a real, I mean, a, I needed to build a story. Yeah. Let, let's put it this way. She had all of her stuff written now and I had to take bits and pieces and move them around and make yeah. a story. Yeah. And, and that was one of the coolest projects that I've worked on so far. Um, awesome. I actually got to go down there and I collaborated with them and did layout while I was down uh, visiting right. them. Yep. And we got to go to the printer, see mock-ups. And so it was awesome. just gr a great time. 
now that you don't offer that to everybody, but that's, that's an awesome, awesome thing that you've got a relationship with care too. That is a friendship too. And that's, yeah. that's a, that's a really good thing. Yes. Um, and, uh, it's hard. If you're close business. to me. Yeah. If you're close to me, I do offer some, some services like JT okay. is mm -hmm. in Chicago. So I'm actually helping him with fulfillment. Awesome. Okay. So that's, so it That's depends. something else. Yeah. And it really, yeah. And you've got to, you know, like anything right now with the pandemic, we've got online, you've got all kinds of ways that you can be helpful that for different aspects of the business. So whether it's in person or not, uh, let me, uh, can I throw a couple questions at you? I had a question from um, Mr. Hawkins. So let's see what we got here. Mr. Hawkins says, Lisa, what regular marketing insight do most creatives ignore or do not know about self-promotion? Oh, man. You know, a lot of things, I'm going to speak to crowdfunding. Um, yeah. And what I see a lot on pages is that people are not utilizing graphics the way that they gotcha. should. Yep. Um, graphics are like one of your most impactful things that you can have on your Kickstarter. And sometimes the page are a hot mess. Um, you know, you got to be able to read the stuff on the graphics. Yeah. Yep. You want to have high enough resolution, but you don't want to make it so big that they have to scroll to see yeah. the whole cover. You need yeah. to have it, you know, proportion, and that's, yeah. part, that's mm -hmm. part of what I do. Yeah. That's part of what I do is I make those graphics, you okay. know, all day long, bam, bam, bam. So when you're, when you're looking at it, then your visual aspect of it too, that, well, and you got, that's the other thing too. Let's talk about that. You've got a graphics background. You've got a, do you have a mm -hmm. degree in graphics or do you, what? Yeah. So, I mean, tell everybody about that. No, too, right? I actually, I actually, um, took classes, just basic yeah. classes on, on the program. I, uh, am so, what do you call it? Um, creative and, um, intelligent enough to like intuitively figure out the program. No, that's good. I, uh, it's a practical knowledge. That I'm self-taught in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the best uh, designers, I mean, as an architect, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, he dropped out of college. A lot of people don't know that. Frank Lloyd Wright is the greatest architect ever lived. And I say about it on my YouTube channel all the time. Most, you know, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that don't realize he never finished college. So there, that's, wow. you know, I'd rather you be somebody that is a practical knowledge learner that applies their knowledge. Cause I've seen a lot of people with paper that don't know anything. So I'm telling you as an overeducated person myself, um, that's, that's awesome. I would rather you were truthful and authentic about it. Um, but you're using the things that you've learned for the betterment, uh, in your business towards somebody's campaign. And that's, that's what I was trying to get Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Uh, let me go to this one here real quick. Uh, what was, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from the desk of a small press publisher. Uh, let's see what we got here. What has been the most difficult thing in writing a copy for an established branding? I'm assuming that you would be involved in building from what has been established in prayer campaigns. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So let's see. Um, sometimes I have to actually go back and let's say it's um, a comic book and it's number four in the series. I need okay. to go back and I need to do research. I go back and I look at the campaigns. I go back and I look at their um, social media pages to see what they've done. Yeah. Um, what put out i read the books and then i decide you know hey what kind of information and questions do i need to ask in order for me to fill in the who what where when why sure you sure. know and how we're gonna go and promote promote it where where is the draw yeah and what's so the, yeah, that what's the, i mean what's the cheddar right what's what's the rub i mean where where's yeah I right what exactly you're yes brian saying. we are definitely gonna <laughs> hang out sometime yeah, 
Brian's always got to put his two cents in, but yeah, Brian's, um, yeah, I don't think too, I think that you, that would be an award-winning uh, campaign if you guys did that together. Skunk rocker. Absolutely. Kyle, Kyle uh, let's see what we got here. He says, I have a question. What percentage, uh, hold on a second. I've got a new comment. I don't know why it's coming up like that. I'm sorry. I have it's a question. Okay. What percentage of project uh, should be finished before posting a crowdfunding campaign? Um, I, I'll answer this. I think that uh, the majority of it for me, I would want to have the project done, me, with and then work on the stretch goals additional uh, during that time. That's me. But go ahead. You tell them, tell them what you think. Yeah, I really should have the project, you know, 90 percent done, you know, with with the goal of having completed by the end of your um, project. I, there's the variables um, I've seen. Oh, I don't want to mention names, but I've seen a campaign that was just butchered or they were for it's, for, you know what? I will, I will call them out. Lady death okay. stand. That oh, was, right. that one fell on their face. Yeah. They fell on their face and I feel bad because I used to work with those guys and, um, do you think it was just mismanagement or just a mistake? On, on how absolutely it the absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely they they pushed me out of their their little click and i was like wow <laughs> you know i was probably the most talented person you had in your entire crew and you know like sayonara suckers you know yeah. so yeah. but um they they have been over a year and they still have not fulfilled so shame. you know they so you think it was a comedy of errors? They didn't even have it. It was not play tested, and oh, the okay. game developer, yeah, the game developer was still play testing when they were yeah. doing the campaign. They made That's changes. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Did they need yeah. the money that badly? It's was it very the, dangerous. Was it funding? Yeah. Uh, was so important that they had, and I understand that too. I mean, I can I can totally get that. Um, Let's, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Did that answer? Uh, I think that but, pretty much. But again, you go back 90 to 95 yeah. percent done would be ideal, and and especially you know if if you are not doing like a comic and you have um, other variables, like if you're yeah. doing a game and you yeah. have like little molded pieces, you know, yeah. you might want to you're going to want to have everything ready for the printer yeah. at least yeah you know and that's yeah, and, and I, ready to go and worked out we um you know we've used that i've used this in, in my past career idiot proofing something is so important and i know that i overthink and overanalyze everything to exhaustion but try to idiot proof the whole situation before the idiots show up you know because you want to make sure that you've got you know for the lack of a better word you know what i mean because idiots are mistakes. I don't consider people that it's just things happen you know, life happens. And that's, there's too many variables on this type of thing. Uh, Jeffrey Hayes, uh, let me go on sure. to another one here. Thanks for all the questions, guys. I appreciate sure. it. Um, do you think that creating video is important to successful crowdfunding campaign? Now, Jeffrey has an angle on this because I think he's brilliant, um, which I'm going to buy. I'm going to plug by the way. Uh, in March, Jeffrey's going to be on TED Talks. I don't know which date. I don't have it, I don't have it in front of me. But anyway, uh, Jeffrey uh, Hayes is awesome. Um, but in any case, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, I do. I really do feel that having a video is important. Um, there are a variety of ways that creators, even if they don't utilize my services, I, I have ways of making video. Um, I'm self-taught in Premiere Pro, so okay. um, I can do videos, basic videos. Um, but uh, I do know people can do videos for them. That's part of the networking thing that I yeah. that I have. Of, yeah. You'll collaborate. I've networked with a lot of different people. Yep. That's good. Yeah. I mean, that, that's something. Um, uh, some people have their own groups, like you said. And I know Jeff... Uh, Jeff does some amazing stuff with book covers. I mean, just incredible. Uh, just the the whole promo mm -hmm. thing. He's incredible. Um, and that's, you know, collaborations are really important, but it's got to be, it's got to be economical too. And that's, that's something I know Jeff is, but just in general, a lot of people want to be all inclusive. Hey, listen, I've got a whole team of people and this is what it's going to run. Are you, are you, do you have a setup group that you handle that you work with only with, 
your management team or is it no or, or is it cop i know you said that you kind of carb it's launch me. a little bit okay so it's, it's me and mm -hmm. and and um so what i will do is if there's like an extra cost usually we use like fire and it's you know like if you need a um voiceover for your yeah. uh video yeah. You know, it might cost you 15 bucks extra. Okay. I'm, I am as economical as possible um, based off of, you know, what your uh, budget is, you know, right. what I you gotta understand be people can't afford. Yeah. yeah well, and, that's, and setting your campaign, setting your campaign level to an achievable goal, it's a balance. I mean, it's a, you know, I know some people that, that only fund for th say 700 or a thousand dollars but it's guaranteed that right. they're going to hit that. You know what I mean? It's almost guaranteed. I know some people can't get 500 and I know I've had other people say, you know, why right. are they even trying for 500? Why even do it? Why don't they just borrow money from their parents or something? If they're, you know what I mean? But it's a distribution end of it. I mean, the exposure end of it is what I'm thinking, but um, let's see. Right. Uh, comics uh, and more New Jersey, Lisa, uh, what would be one piece of advice to give someone who is planning on launching a Kickstarter? The first thing, what would be one bit of advice? Well, one thing I'll put out there is that I would say talk to me because I do offer free one hour consults. Right. So that is one bit of advice. That's a huge thing. Um, so, but it's huge. Yes. And, and that is because I truly believe in, in making people successful. I'll be brutally honest with you. I mean, and if you, if you can't afford my services, that's fine. You at least have yeah. the information. You know, yeah. I and, mean, that, the one hour, and that's up to them to execute. Right. The one hour, um, uh, free, there's not, there's no obligation, but there is, uh, you'll take an hour yep. at least, or is it now do you take on, um, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I, I how can I put it? I'm a little, I, I curate a lot <laughs> on, on people cause I don't, not everybody I have time for. I, I'm not trying to be difficult or anything, but how do you, uh, do you only take on what you think is, is going to be a good campaign that's the other thing too are you very uh, curative you know when it comes to that sometimes people just aren't ready the, the artwork's not ready the story's not there is there is there a filter that they go through with you so um i try to help everybody you know if 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 their campaign is if their campaign goal is only like two grand, so what? Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if yeah. their prior campaign cool. only I'm, hit two grand, yeah, I'm okay with that because I, I, I mean, I'll be, I'll be totally honest. I get a deposit up front for services, yeah. whether or not yeah. they fund or not, because I mm -hmm. do do work. Right. Do, well, you do. should get a retainer. Absolutely. <laughs> There's you my get first a bad word. <laughs> I always did. No, it's good. Yeah. I always did. I always did. So as, as a designer, always retainer you know yeah absolutely absolutely and i take the risk then if they're if they fund at the end you know my retainer goes against the the final percentages okay because there's a percentage a total percentage of what you make right and each and one it's all is custom unique. it's you all a cart right right mm -hmm. And it should be, I mean, each, cause each individual project is an individual project and it should be considered that. I think that that's, uh, that's vital. Um, from the desk of small press publisher, uh, what strategies do you, uh, advise your clients on marketing beyond the Kickstarter campaign? I see too many creators leaving money on the tables as a result of not going beyond Kickstarter. I think you've got a, I mean, are got we one talking, right now, right? Yeah, we have um, Rob Latari, who is mm -hmm. um, running on Indiegogo On Demand mm -hmm. um, after having a successful Kickstarter campaign. Um, I talked to him the other day and, you know, he made $14,000 and, and did very well for his Kickstarter, I feel. Um, you know, he's like, Ind Indiegogo for him was just another platform because he felt that there was people that don't do Kickstarter um, right. that he could appeal to. 
And that's why he did do that. Um, and it's important to note that Indiegogo requires these silly little graphics and all these little sizes. And I can do all of that uh, for you. So you don't have to worry about that. But um, sometimes that an it doesn't that's make That's an additional sense. charge, though. That's an additional charge because you're on a different campaign, technically, right? Because your Kickstarter is one campaign. Yeah, and so Indiegogo would be, it would be a completely different, I would think. Right. Yes, absolutely. So we build we build out based off of my whole plans and my creative contracts are based off of you know what what the vision is for the creator. Right. So if they plan right. on going to Indiegogo after that, that but get that gets built into everything. You know, there might be another deposit for for that section of time. Who knows? Yeah. You know, it, it depends. It really so, does depend. Right. And I know that, um, you know, here's the deal. Not every campaign is going to fund. And I know that, uh, and, you know, it's like building a home. I go back to the architecture thing. Not every house is going to be built. I'm still going to get paid for those drawings that I did for the homes, right? And it's the same goes with campaigns. It should right. be with any any scenario. So when you guys are looking at this, uh, I mean, be a realist, guys. Lisa's time is valuable. She's very... Um, uh, it's very cost effective uh, when she sets everything up with the campaigns. Um, but this is to enhance your campaign. This isn't to fund your campaign. This is to so understand that, too. Um, and coming out of the gate, having such huge success uh, with uh, Karen. I mean, that's what a better uh, foundation to start with, you know, because you've already got it. You already know what's what's happening. Now, do you end up uh, are you a big promoter of tchotchkes? of things when you're bonusing the, you know, okay, we get to the level, okay, we $2,500, $3,000. Are, are there things that you come up with, say, hey, maybe we should, um, you know, give everybody a fedora or maybe, you know, Ted, maybe you could do this when, you know what I mean? Is there something that you, or maybe one of your, has everybody noticed her crown, by the way? Her, uh, anybody? Okay. Just so you guys know, I mean, she is, she is the promo. The promo queen. I so, am the promo queen. Um, yes. Uh, to answer your question, I do help. Yeah. Um, yes, with the Chashkis. And I try to keep people realistic uh, in terms of, you know, what they're spending their money on. And, you know, uh, even going as far as helping to source some of these items from okay. like Alibaba or something like that. If right. they need help with that yeah. um, to get an idea. Um, for cost and everything. That's a I little bit, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit more difficult because I've had some issues. Cause if I, if I'm the one communicating and then I'm like, Oh, you got to send everything to this email. They're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, is that, so, is that but, the, but is that included in the price services that you offer or is it additional? Cause that, that's something I would, I would, it, I would think would be it additional. Depends. Everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's all, it all depends. So, yeah. Yeah. um, I look at each project. I look at what could potentially, where the money is potentially going to come. And I try not to charge for every single like little thing. I don't like to nickel and dime people. Right. You right. know what I mean? I, I look reason, at, yeah. at the whole picture. Yeah. I look at the whole picture and I give you, you know, like, uh, it's up to a certain amount for a deposit and then yeah. it's just a percentage at the end. Got That's it. it, you know? And right. and then I know what my responsibilities are for that particular uh, creator. Got it. Now, um, from the desk of small press publisher, he also asked, um, let me get, I just want to an answer this follow-up question. Uh, the previous question about going beyond Kickstarter is about going beyond crowdfunding. Uh, what advice do you have for getting okay. uh, into over revenue streams like diamond? Um, now, do you know much about Diamond? I mean, I can kind of jump on this a bit, if not. You can jump on this. I am not, I know of Diamond. Mm -hmm. I know what Diamond does. I don't um, deal with them. Uh, I would like to, to rather see more retailers get involved yeah. in crowdfunding and supporting uh, right. crowdfunding projects as opposed to uh, revenue streams like Diamond. Yeah. Um, but 
go I mean, ahead. Yeah, a lot you, of things with Diamond. I, you know, after last year uh, with Diamond, I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of hesitant of it. I know that I would look at it from a standpoint of, um, I go with smaller shops because I get better return, and I know who's doing. I, you know, this isn't like mass production across the line. I don't produce books like that. Um, for me, if it was on a I, I don't know. I, there's a lot of different things. One baby steps, as far as I was concerned, Kickstarter is one thing. Okay. We've achieved this. Okay. And it has a distribution channel. Now we've got that established. I think diamond is kind of, and this is just my opinion. It's my channel. So I think diamond is dying. I think that there is a, a obvious uh, movement right now that things are changing. And I've been talking about this for two years. I think that diamond is not going to be, it isn't what it used to be anyway. Um, but you're going to, I think that there's going to be some definite uh, other companies that are, are small time like us, like a group of, uh, a group of creators that are going to be taking on, uh, maybe they'll do their own distribution. Uh, there, there's all things that we can look at. Um, but diamond is just a, it's always nice having your comic book. Yeah. Okay. It's in diamond. Okay. Yeah, I get it. But I think things are changing. I've seen too many smaller companies get very frustrated over the last ordeals this last year. And they're looking at independence more now. And a lot of them are looking at Kickstarter too. They're watching, you know, Hey, can I get this? What if I, you know, what if I end up getting, and a lot of the, um, some of the campaigns right now offer a starter pack for, um, independent comic shops to buy 10 copies of yada, 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 whatever. I know that that if I ever run a Kickstarter, I'm going to offer that because I think that's important too, that you set your expectations with the reality that these small time shops don't have a huge budget, but I'd be willing to work with them because they're going to get my, my message out. Um, I wouldn't right. have, got, I wouldn't have gotten, necessarily out to make a profit. Right. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm convinced profit. I wouldn't have got my, yeah. my uh, book retrieved scripted in Hollywood if it weren't for a small, uh, comic book shop in Bay city that sold the, the producer in California, a copy of my book. There's no way, there's no way I would have gotten that, that deal. So, I mean, I, I look at it from a uh, baby steps and then get, you know, you're, it, it's always networking. It's always marketing, but that's why I would look at it. I don't know if that answered the question or not, but that's, that's kind of how I would look at it. Um, so I don't know if that was helpful or not, but I think that there's, you know, there's always, you know, people argue with me about diamond all, all day long. Um, let's see, Amy, I'm just reading Amy's thing real quick. I'm sorry. Okay. So Amy asked, how do you determine if a project should be crowdfunding project or personally funded? That's a good question. Um, so I, I personally don't feel that in this day and age with the way things are going that you should have to just personally fund your, your project, you know, save that money to invest in, um, the art, you know, mm -hmm. save that money to invest in someone like me who can mm -hmm. actually just blow it out of the water for you. And, and so a Della, a delegation um, investment, you're saying delegating investing. I mean, that's yeah. good. A collaboration yeah, investment. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, the crowdfunding part of it is where it's at right now, just because so many people are going on Kickstarter. They right. are getting um, books through there because, you know, COVID and a lot of these small comic shops, unfortunately, did not survive. Right. You know, I've noticed that some of the ones in my area have closed down and yeah. it's unfortunate, you know. Right. Um, she also um, she also um, asked if I can interrupt. But, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to put this up, too. I'm listening. No, to go you. ahead. I'm going to put I'm going to put this up and then you can you can finish your thought. Um, rather I'd rather or, do some projects do better. With crowdfunding than others, like a comic book versus. A um, it depends. And you can you can sell a novel, um, but you definitely want to have a draw, whether it's some sort of art, variant yeah. covers, um, you Hard, know, hardbound your books, stretch goals. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hardbound books, limited edition, uh, you know, uh, Kickstarter exclusives, you know, and you can expand it and, and even do, uh, like posters of the art, you know, yeah, there's, there's right. different, there's Something different things. Yeah. It's, it's and it's all... unique and it's unique to that particular fund. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I like about them. You're getting right. into this, uh, you know, you're getting into the VIP section, you know, you're, you're doing, nobody else is yes. going to have this except a select few because you invested in this. Right. Um, and that's, that's the way I've looked right. at it too. Good questions. Good questions. Amy. Um, and, and I actually, if I can, I yeah, can't remember please. who I was please. talking to, about, this, but they had told me that if you are an executive producer of like a book, you can actually go and say and get passes for places yeah. like cons and stuff because you're an executive producer. Yeah. You know, um, those are wonderful tiers to offer and yes. people will buy into them. Absolutely. Because they get those perks. Yeah. So don't leave money on the table by personally funding. I, I absolutely support crowdfunding. And I and not know, only the, that, you get so many more yeah. eyes on it with social media. Yeah, period. I mean, you're you're you've got a billboard of on the on the world stage. It's not just uh right. It's not just your Facebook, which we all know about that algorithm lately. Uh Joe, uh okay. <laughs> Let's leave that alone. Okay. Uh, Joni McPhee. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe. Yes. Joe's, um, from the desk of a small press publisher, which is a great name by the way. Um, okay. Was asking three questions, uh, was asking these questions because I feel the creators are overly focused on crowdfunding and not build online stores or distribute. Yeah. And I understand that, uh, our distribution chains after the campaign, I think that you have to do it hand in hand, but I think that the leverage that you've got with crowdfunding, like we were talking about the eyes again, you have to package everything yourself. You got to send things out, whatever, but the exposing yeah. end of it, I mean, it's, it's a, it's like Niagara falls versus just a trickle of a faucet. I mean, you've got, you got to look at it, both sides of it. You know um, I think that like you were saying, I've crowd, I've, I haven't crowdfunded anything. Everything's been out of pocket for me and it's been a successful, but I'm a control freak. So it's different for me. Um, I know that in the future, though, I mean, Christine and I have been dealt. We've been talking about this for like the last year. Crowdfunding is going to be our, what we're going to do for this book coming out or this book. This is what we're going to do. And this is going to be kind of our normal after that. But once that once that uh, switch is flipped, it's going to be we're going to know exactly how it's going to be going down the line with with every Kickstarter, because this is what we're going to do on each one of them. And we're going to learn from, you know, I've, I've got one good friend that they actually use their Kickstarter funding for the book uh, that is they, they've already gotten the money for the kick. They're like one book ahead, if that makes any sense. So they're yes. running a Kickstarter now. Absolutely. It's already been funded. It's for the next book that's going to come out that people don't even know about yet. And it's a very interesting way that they did that. Um, it's not illegal. I don't think it's illegal, but I think it's brilliant. Um, they're using it's a really it's a strategy that I think is, is fantastic. Because they've already got, it's already done. The material's already there. It's already ready to go. And that was answering right. Skunk's question earlier. Um, but I don't know. There's there's a lot of different things. And that's, you know, crowdfunding is, is such a baby right now. It's not even to its full potential yet, I don't think. No, so, no. And, anyway. and part of what I, I also kind of want to speak to a little bit of what Joe said, yeah. you know, a lot of these creators are fulfilling on their own. Okay. Yes. And they're not necessarily always getting everything in from China on time. You know, China has a holiday right now or something, you know, right. uh, yeah. so everything's shut down. You can't get anything right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, printer issues and you want to get quotes and you don't necessarily want to use the cheapest person just because they, you know, are cheap. You're going to get what you pay for. Right. Right. You know, and then again, there's people like um, heroes and villains in Arizona who does amazing work with different types of hollow foils mm -hmm. um, that are just amazing. Um, but they can't necessarily do novels, 
you know, so they can't find right. find like that. Right. They can their specialty they can do comics, is this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, you know, you, you definitely want to look at the different options that you have available to you. And, you know, Joe also said, um, I see the most don't market well due to that. And I know that they don't. A lot of a lot of them, they don't market well. Some people I don't I, I've seen some that are just they should not be. They really need help and they're just not ready yet to. Yeah. And I'm, you know, and that's you know, when you the first 30 seconds or the first 10 seconds in their video or whatever it is, you know whether it's the sound or whatever. And they just, right. they're trying to make it work and I get that. And it's, and I'm, I applaud them for that, but it's, there's a certain amount of uh, finesse and, and, um, you know, presentation's key, right? Uh, presentation's everything. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Car- absolutely. Carl Witzman, I'm going to, I'm not going to post, but Carl Witzman said that a lot of people are using Kickstarter as their online store, which I get. And that's right. I, I understand that. And I think that that's just not a, not a bad move at all. Um, and you know they're using Crowdox afterwards too for for additional orders as well. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to go down here to uh, Brian says, but many creators don't bother to keep up with current events. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the things going on with China right now with uh, this current events, and I mean, there's a lot of certain things. Oh aren't let yeah, out or, no, you know, on I and don't. On. Politically, it's a mess, but yeah, you know, but. I don't suggest using any sort of fulfillment type company, in my personal opinion, mm-hmm. unless you are just like overly slammed because it's it's costs so much to have that done. And yeah. and quite frankly, if even if you had 500 backers, as long as you didn't have, you know, like 50 different covers. Right. You should. And that's be another good. thing, too. You know what I your, mean? Yeah. Yeah. Controlling your uh, your output is real important, too, because I've seen a lot of people that they give everything away and it takes forever to get the products in. Uh, you know, it takes a year to get some of the stuff in. Um, let's see. Comics in more New Jersey says um, with promoting the Kickstarter, the creator should be collecting the emails, getting them to follow the social media platforms and keep them shopping with you until the next Kickstarter project. So does that is that something that your your service offers too? Is or is it just the the marketing side of it? Well, uh, in terms of collecting emails, or just in general, so management or, of the of the campaign is it a complete? Is it a, do you have a complete package that uh, it'll have a management side of it to where you'll actually help um, a campaign fully through? Like for instance, I set up one. Is there a way that economically we would we would do it as a as a, a setup to where you're handling and balancing the things. So, Hey, Ted, we got to put this on, we've got to put this uh, print on here. We, we should probably do this for the new promo. We should offer this. Cause I noticed that, and this is going yeah. from what the comics and more are saying, uh, cause I see that daily. I see a lot of people updating what they're doing and this is where we're at and we need to be, we're at 60, we need to be at 70, whatever. Uh, and this is what we're doing yeah. for it. But I don't know if I have the time to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of us don't. We, we're trying to do other things. We're, you know, YouTubers or whatever. And it's, so, we got so many right, raising so, the chihuahua, you know, all that stuff. So raising baby chihuahua. Right. So it's kind yeah, of, you know, it's I know. Kind of hectic. I know. How does that, puppy, how does, puppy do you, issue. yeah, right. You know, how does that, um, how does that work with, with, uh, say the service that you would provide? So I do offer social media management services mm-hmm. um, and it's, if it's for a Kickstarter, it there, uh, this it, like I have a la carte programs. So if you just wanted social mm-hmm. media management, um, I can do that. Um, and then it's just a percentage by um, like a, a weekly percentage, yeah. like for how long you want me to, manage your social media for so um yeah so it it depends if if you're not running a kickstarter you know um like right now i'm talking with my clients and i'm consulting with them about what they should be posting and how Mm. they should be growing um and like what i need from them in order to prep for posts that we're going to be putting up for the campaign got it that's coming up. So, you know, like in progress, you know, inkings and, you know, stuff like that. Everything, yeah, so, sure. Um, yeah. Those are really good questions. Uh, yeah. Um, cause I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that either. Uh, 
So, I mean, okay, we're about an hour and 16 minutes in. I appreciate your time today. I think that we've got a lot, lot covered. Um, is there anything else you want to add to anything? I mean, is there anything that we can uh, close out with besides your social media? Is there something else you want to tell people about uh, your adventures in uh, crowdfunding campaigning? Well, I, you know, I'm really open to anything and um, I do work with people on an individual basis. I, I, you know, I understand that creators are struggling right now and, mm -hmm. you know, we're all trying to make a buck. So, yeah. you know, I, I just highly encourage anybody who has project that they're thinking about doing or that know that they're doing um, just to reach out and, and take the chance and have that one hour talk with me. The, it, there's there's no obligations whatsoever, you know, um, other than I might follow up with you and bug you a little bit to see if you want sure. services. Sure. Um, but, how do, you know, how do, people, I, I just, uh, how do people reach you that way? Do they just get a hold of you on Facebook or what's the, what's the, optimal? yeah, Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me um, on my personal page. It's Lisa Malone, M E L O N E. Um, or you can um, message me through Malone Management, which is also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't like to get out my um, phone number or, or email, personal sure. email, but uh, on the shows. But that's the best way to reach me right Understandable. now. Understandable. Understandable. I know that there's, um, you know, and there's only so much we can do in an hour here. I mean, we're trying to just get people to understand that there's options. And, you know, the one thing about. Um, Absolutely. You know, the one thing about Lisa is she's willing to work with you on budget. And that's that's a hard thing to find nowadays. There's a lot of people that just want to this is it. This is what's going to cost. And we're not going to do much for you. But, you know, Lisa offers you this uh, carte blanche, a little bit of a uh, campaign cafeteria selection is what I kind of look at it. You know, it's a buffet. And that that's really important in today's world because not everybody's loaded right now. We're trying to make money. We're trying to uh, invest money wisely if we have it. And, you know, that's, you know, that's the key of it. You know, I can't, I can't thank you enough, uh, Lisa. This has been awesome. I've um, had fun. This has been great. I could talk yeah. to you forever. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Well, we're, what we're going to do is I know that, um, and I want to hear some uh, comments back to you guys, because I think what I'd like to do is bring a panel of, uh, I, I think I'm going to bring a panel of, it's probably going to be a mixed panel of different business owners um, that offer different services, whether it's campaigning and whether it's uh, printing, you know, art production, all different kinds of things in the future. And I'd like to, you know, get your thoughts on that too. Uh, where can everybody yeah, else absolutely. find, you know, where else can everybody else find you? Is there any other uh, things that you're doing right now that are on campaign or so they can see more of your, your specialty? Right now, um, I'm promoting Rob Mutari's uh, Night Wolf Volume 1, which is on Indiegogo On Demand. Um, and in the near future, I will be promoting Beast King by Shane Morrison, which will be on Kickstarter in March. Uh, and hopefully the Sapphire Spectre will also be on Kickstarter in March. Got it. And is there, uh, Kira's all done though, all of her fire, uh, there's nothing else on that that you can purchase or anything like that with fire bitch or anything, any of those? Uh, she still has her crowd ox going, I, I believe right now. She's on okay. a 30 day ban <laughs> again. <laughs> um, they popped, they popped both of her accounts, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but she's got her crowd ox going still, which you can find on her fan club and on her uh, main page. Um, she's got a beautiful 24 by 36 poster that they did that mm. I, I'm like, man, if it was only like 11 by 17, so I could put it in my portfolio, sure, I would sure. buy it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. have, well, you got connections. <laughs> Maybe she'll do that for you. You never know. Right. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> I got the hook up. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I appreciate your time. Stick around for a minute. I'm going to end the broadcast. Um, thank you guys for all. Yeah. The questions and okay. I'll be right back. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Yep. Thank you. So there you have it, guys. Um, avenues. That's the only thing. You know, we're all on a journey. We're trying to make it. And this is another avenue that you can take. So hopefully you can check out uh, Lisa Malone's management company. I think that, um, you know, it, it's something to, it's viable. And it's an option that if you're not real sure about the campaigning of it all, you haven't done any Kickstarter, it's worth an hour talk with her. See what it's about. 
and see if uh, she's willing to maybe take you on uh, with the project. So I can't say enough about her. I recommend her. And I think that uh, you guys are, you know, it's a win-win uh, with Lisa, the promo queen. So uh, in closing, um, I want you everybody to check out what we're doing on Rising Tide uh, Broadcast Network on Facebook, like I was talking about. Check everything out that's going on with Ted Davies Artistry as well. Uh, TedDaviesArtistry.com, Ted Davies Artistry YouTube. Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, uh, Carl Witzman and I are doing Ted and Carl's Cigar Show, and we are doing uh, cigars in movies. So if you want to find out a little bit more about that, check us out. It's about an hour talk. We just relax. If you're a cigar smoker, by all means, join us. If you're not, by all means, join us. It's just a couple guys just enjoying uh, our hobby of cigar smoking. Uh, I want to thank everybody for stopping in. Uh, no envy, no fear. I appreciate uh, you guys so much taking the time out and putting, uh, you know, putting some questions out there for us. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Well, actually, all, all of you Thursday, hopefully. But we'll be back uh, Tuesday with TED Talks, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much, guys.